All right, hello and welcome to Microsoft Teams and Office 365 Power Users. Uh, today, we are gonna talk about Microsoft Endpoint Management Part 2. Well, as you might uh, assume, uh, or that as that implies, there was a Part 1, which is the last time. So the last session, we talked about um, a lot of the uh, device uh, endpoint management for uh, the most common thing that clients or organizations run across, which is Windows devices that are corporate owned. And uh, today we are gonna get into part two, which is uh, uh, devices that are uh, corporate owned or personally owned. However, they are uh, more things along tablets, um, personal devices like iPhones or Android phones, uh, and some of the capabilities that you might want to employ there. Um, so that'll be fun. Uh, definitely, it'll help delineate between a couple acronyms in our industry that drive people a little crazy between MDM or MAM. What does it mean? Uh, why should you know? And I purposely am not defining those right now because Corey will get into those a little bit later. Uh, but uh, uh, by the way, Corey is presenting today. Uh, I'll be facilitating, and uh, Stephanie and Jonathan are kind of producing behind the scenes. So, Corey, if you move on to the next slide. if it's going to let me there we go there we go all right so uh as people join in uh because this is a collaborative session we do want to have uh, the option for people to chime uh join and contribute and ask questions please go ahead and mute your mic uh go ahead and either enter questions into the chat conversation or use the raise your hand feature from a reaction perspective uh when you join so that we can uh keep keep the recording good and also being able to everyone to hear each other when you get when you do actually ask your question okay uh, next, so one minute about MyTech. Uh, we are uh, a business technology and consulting organization that works with small and medium businesses. Um, one of the things that we uh, have, we believe that we're doing a little bit differently um, is that we have defined a proven and executed on a proven IT strategy over the last 20 some years um, that we know achieves consistent, reliable outcomes for our clients. Uh, we know those outcomes remove challenges uh, and ultimately allows our clients to achieve four times more value and productivity from their IT investments. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about that, we'd love to hear from you. Please raise your hand uh, either in this session, actually not necessarily in this session, but afterwards, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Um, but that's not why you're here today, so let's move on to the rest of the content. One of the things we like to define as we get into it is uh, we have defined a thing called Power Users, uh, which is not a Microsoft designation. It's not like a permission that you can find in the Microsoft Admin Center. Um, we define Power Users as those who are um, able to uh, create teams or sites inside of an organization. Uh, Microsoft by default allows anyone to create a team, anyone to create a site. Um, most of the organizations we work with pretty much every single one of them we've ever worked with uh, doesn't like that idea. They'd rather restrict that so that there's a, a, an, an intention and organizational design around leveraging this technology. And the power users are those folks in the organization that we're trying to empower through sessions like these to be in a position to help collaborate internally and operationalize uh, this um, the way in which you use um, the Microsoft 365 technology and try and apply it in the best possible way uh, and in alignment with your organization's design. So that's what a power power user means to us, and uh, that's what we are. Those are the folks that we're targeting uh, for this session. And with that said, Corey, uh, take it away and lead us into Microsoft Endpoint Management Part Two. Awesome, thanks, Nate. All right, so just a quick recap of previous sessions that we've done. Um, we've done quite a few around uh, Teams and SharePoint, kind of how to set some of those up, some permissions with that, um, you know, some best practices around that. We moved into a little bit more detail on um, the SharePoint side, um, as well as how to protect that data that's in there with labeling um, and conditional access ruling along with multi-factor authentication and how to apply that. Um, in those sessions as well, we discuss, you know, not just internal, you know, company users, but also those who are outside your organization that might be invited in to help collaborate on a project or have some sort of um, board that ties in as well. A common thing we see that with is board of directors. And so how do you protect all that data when you have internal and external users? And so um, those are what a lot of our previous sessions have been through. And then um, as noted uh, last time, we did talk, um, you know, more about that, you know, company device, that Windows PC that everybody's using, how to manage monitor that, how to set up some rules for that, um, how to manage it through the 365 and some of the features with autopilot, um, which helps improve, you know, IT productivity by, you know, 
simplifying and speeding up the process of deploying endpoints. Um, and then today we're going to get more into that. You know, here's the the personal device, the cell phone, the tablet. Um, you know, that might be company owned as well, um, and how you're going to be able to manage that within the Microsoft ecosystem. Um, and it has some really cool uh, features with that. We'll also um, kind of touch base that it, you know, enables the kind of bring your own device mentality with uh, work, um, especially with hybrid work, um, which is where a lot of this is going to come into um, play today. So um, looking at that, we also like to touch base on the Microsoft 365 licensing suite and you call out that there are kind of different categories with that. So there's the business SKUs, there's the office SKUs, and then there's the Microsoft 365 SKUs. And so um, most of the features that we are talking about today will be included with the business premium SKU um, and then the Microsoft 365 um, SKUs, the F1, E3, and E5. Um, the office SKUs, um, while they do include like the office product suite, it doesn't include a lot of the advanced features for endpoint management and pieces like that. Um, and so that's what we'll do. And then to, uh, just as a reminder, so we had endpoint manager that we talked about. Um, that's basically the definition from Microsoft here, but it's, you know, a combination of either just cloud or cloud and on-prem or on-prem only to manage your devices. Um, specifically with these sessions, we're looking at the cloud management side, um, but there is a tie-in that can go between on-prem, um, which you could use your traditional group policy, along with the endpoint management side in 365 to manage devices. And as a reminder of why do we use endpoint management or why would you want to use it? Um, simplified and consistent PC deployment. Um, user and group specific deployments. So you might have a marketing team. You can create a specific profile that deploys applications for a marketing team or for a finance team. And all that user does is have to be assigned to that group. And then whenever they log into a device, it'll automatically install the applications they need, um, really simplifying that process. So if they you know, get a new machine or they have to move to a different PC for the day or they go to a different site and log in, they will still have access to everything that they need. Um, and then it reduces the, the IT setup time. Um, you know, so rather than having to manually go install every application every time that a new PC comes in, you can just log the user in and let it install all the applications. Um, the other side with that is also the autopilot side that we mentioned last time where um, you can purchase PCs and get the information straight from you know, Dell, Lenovo, HP, import that right into Intune and coordinate with them. And so when the devices get shipped out, they can go straight to the user, the user can log in and it starts provisioning it for them right there and, you know, prevents that sending it to the IT department, having them set it up, then shipping it out to the user. So simplifies and reduces that there. Um, central, centralized device management. So, you know, traditional um, solutions have been, you can only manage Windows devices, or you can only manage, you know, Apple devices, or you can only manage, um, you know, Android devices. The endpoint manager with 365 brings that all together into one um, cohesive unit where you can manage every device within your organization from that one uh, platform, that one portal. Um, and then also you get centralized reporting. Um, and there's some improved security that you can get through this. Um, with 365, um, with certain licenses, specifically the, like the E5 license, the enterprise E5 license, um, you can get some, you know, very high end reporting that um, ties in with Windows Defender, um, you know, user sign ins, location sign ins, um, risks that may come up from that. And so endpoint management can bring that all the way to your endpoint as well, rather than just a user logging into their email. So there's some improved security that comes with that um, as well. And then obviously the last one here, bring your own device, which um, I've got another slide for that here. So here's a nice little definition of bring your own device. But the big takeaways from bring your own device is that, um, you know, sometimes an employee likes to have their own device or their, you know, they like this one branded device or they want something a little different than what the company provides. Um, with bring your own device with endpoint management, it would allow you to have that employee use their personal device, still protect company data through policies. And all they have to do is just, you know, log into your endpoint management solution and say, this is a, a device that I'm using. And, and go from there. And then from there, you can include policies that prevent them from say, you know, exporting data out from, say, Outlook into, you know, a notepad application or something that's not managed by company policy. And so there's a lot of um, protections that can be put into place there. 
Um, and so um, it, it uh, really protects company data and, and enables users to work um, anywhere they want with the device that they want. So as we think about, um, you know, personal devices and company devices that are um, going to be that tablet, iPhone, Android phone there, we have to start to think about, um, you know, what is an acceptable use for accessing data? You know, should users be able to access it from a personal device? Should they be able to access it only from a company device? Should they be able to access it from, you know, within only the confines of the office, you know, behind that public IP address? And so um, here I have um, just pulled up. This is from Security Studios, an organization that we partner with, um, and they have some great templates for um, policies that come around the cybersecurity. And so this is an acceptable use policy that they put out there, which is um, got a pretty good template, but as you would scroll through, um, it talks about access management. You know, it has um, authentication and password requirements um, and data security. And so when you start to talk about a lot of these kinds of elements, now we can start to take that and put it into policy and apply it um, to personal devices, to company owned devices, and put it on to um, you know, any device anywhere in the world instead of it having to be like connected to the domain to have any sort of um, control. You know, it doesn't be connected to the network directly anymore with endpoint management. And so um, one thing is you're starting to think about these policies that you would create. What does your acceptable use policy state? Does it need to be revised? And how can you take that and translate that into rules? Um, another thing to think about is what applications does your organization use that need to be managed? Um, in most cases, this is going to be Outlook, Word, Excel. Um, there might be a few third party applications that come into play. Um, some that come to mind um, would be um, um, it's kind of like Adobe product suites, right? So just the Adobe product suite be managed. Should a finance um, application um, be managed? Um, you know, there's QuickBooks and Sage out there. They have cloud versions. Should those be a managed application? And what this means by managed application is that it's going to use single sign-on with your 365 to be able to log into that application. And so that's going to then allow you to have more control over who and can access that data and when. So those are the things that you need to think about from the application perspective. What applications should your organization manage that the users use? Um, even down to like OneDrive, you know, to access data. Um, and so we also have from their data, what data should be managed right on on these devices. Um, and so that, you know, it's going to be a lot of can they access company SharePoint sites that have, you know, private data that shouldn't be shared with the public or, you know, should they have access to only their OneDrive or should they have only access to email when they are on a personal device or outside of the office. Um, and then. What devices should have that access management? As we've mentioned, it can be company owned devices or personal devices, but that's a question you have to, to evaluate because that depends on what kind of solution you're going to deploy. And for each device type, you might have to do different policies. And so we'll kind of talk about that and show that here in a, in a minute. Um, and then what conditions should be like met to access that data, right? Does it need to be a managed device? Does it need to be a compliant device? Does the user need to use multi-factor authentication to get to it? Um, can it only be accessed using, you know, the Microsoft Office suite? Um, and some pieces like that that really need to be taken into account, or do you not want it to be a managed, you know, application? They can access it from anywhere. Um, so those are some of the, the things that you have to think about when you're deploying these policies. And then, um, Kind of that leads into the last point of what identity management control should be put in place. And so that's going to be kind of going along with your conditional access rules of multi factor authentication or inside or behind your company's firewall, some things like that. So, and Corey, are, are I'll, just interject. Th yep. I'll, I'll just interject. I'll just interject because, like you, you mentioned, you referenced. Uh, you know, some of the content we actually covered earlier this year, too, that we've done, we've done uh, sessions like yeah. this uh, for uh, getting into MFA and a single sign on. And so that we'll, we'll, we'll make sure that those are uh, linked in the video and in the recording. 
uh, for those who may want to reference those. Uh, but yeah, all this, I think what it reminds me of though, Corey, is that all of this is designed to really build on each other, right? So if you put these things in place, you can apply these rules and it's easier to apply this management and all these things. They're all designed to really work hand in hand. Um, and so we're not trying to make it sound overly complex, uh, but security is complex. And so, uh, but, but uh, following some of these prescriptions can definitely make it uh, easier for your organization to you know manage and keep secure so uh, anyway those are just some ideas and thoughts that what you were saying i brought to mind Corey. so yep definitely sure sure. definitely Nate. thanks yeah and so it is and it it is you'll you'll notice a lot of our sessions are designed to go through to build on each other in a in a methodical manner too like let's get your data here how do you manage the data then how do you secure the data now how can you access it from you know other locations so um definitely so the, the uh, next big thing I wanted to reference here is the difference between MDM and MAM. So MDM is mobile device management. MAM is mobile application management. So the best way to think about MDM is that it is a company owned device um, and it, it's fully managed. We have every, con you have every control over that device from your management solution. Um, and this does require some special purchasing and registration processes. Um, you can't just go down to, you know, Home Depot, or not Home Depot, um, <laughs> Best Buy, um, and buy an iPad and expect to be able to do an MDM management with it. And um, you have to purchase an, like an app, uh, iPad through a Apple Business Manager account um, to actually have it registered properly to be tied into endpoint management. Um, devices from the Android side need to be purchased with a, a Google Managed Play account um, to be able to do the same thing. So when you do purchase devices, you have to think about this ahead of time to kind of have that plan. How are we going to manage our devices? Are we going to manage them as an MDM solution where I have that full device management, full application management, full data management? You know, I can do full device wipes if it's stolen, um, you know, pieces like that. Or am I going to do it as a mobile application or MAM management where it's more of a personally owned registered device, which at that point I have limited to no device specific management, as in like if the device is stolen, I can't wipe the entire device. I can wipe the data that's relevant to my company that's managed by the application, but that's all I can touch, um, you know, is, you know, it's limited application management. Um, you know, it's it, it can't can't manage um, built in applications, but it can manage the applications you configure with the, the management solution. So there's Think of it as full management, limited management, um, and MAM is specific to just managing the application and the data within that application. So um, that's the MAM side, the MDM gives you that full management. So those are just two of the big um, kind of pieces to play is what's the full management or the limited management that you want. Um, and then the, the MAM gives you that ability to um, do um, like a, a Windows laptop that somebody owns that they want to use instead, that would be kind of that would be more in the man category um, as well. So it's kind of where those devices would fall. Um, so um, that's Corey, MDM. Uh, and I man. would like to, yeah. So I always like to, as I mentioned earlier, the two acronyms that you know create frustration and confusion because they're very very similar. Um, but yeah, the, the one thing I like to point out about the mobile application management that usually catches people's attention and that kind of makes them do a double take. Uh, so I always like to throw out the honorable mention, and maybe you're going to mention that later, Corey, but even if you are, it's worth mentioning multiple times, uh, is that you know, by default, when you if you use the native uh, on your mobile device, whatever mobile device, Android or, or, or iOS or Apple, uh, if you use the native mail app, uh, to connect to the uh, email, corporate email, um, by default, you're also authorizing the corporation to wipe that device. And I don't just mean wipe the email, I mean wipe the device, meaning like all your, your family photos, everything else that you have on that on that phone, uh, you know, if you uh, leave the organization or uh, uh, otherwise. So, uh, or, or change new phones. So, um, the reason why MAM, mobile application management, is really important is, as Corey alluded to, you're, you're managing the application. So you're basically saying if, if, so if the phone gets lost or stolen or if you leave the organization, uh, the organization can only wipe the corporate data from the corporate applications that are part of the mobile application management platform. Um, so you're really restricting uh, what, the, uh, what, what a company can do on your personal device. Um, uh, and so that's one of the reasons why we see people doing that. It also containerizes the data so you can, you know, make sure to secure it a little bit differently too. Uh, so there's definitely a lot of value in the mobile application management, but the piece that I usually see uh, that triggers people's minds like, wait, 
They can wipe my entire phone, including all my family photos and all those kind of things. Yep, they sure can, unless you do something like MAM. So yep. uh, uh, keep that in mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we we did touch on that in our last session as well a little bit um, as we talked about the kind of kind of bringing it up front a little bit. But yeah, um, the other thing that I would say is that with um, conditional access rules and pieces like that that do get put in play, it does limit some of those abilities to use native apps, which is super helpful um, to prevent some of those pieces. But yeah, and if MAM is not set up correctly on a device, it does put the user at risk of the same um, losing their company or their personal data when the company does a wipe. Um, essentially, I, I would say it's more of doing like a factory reset on the device is more closely what it comes to. Um, but yeah. Um, all right. So, all right. Oh, come on. All right. So, just a few extra notes um, that I have here. So, when you do the configuration for um, whether it's MDM or MAM, each device type requires its own policy. So you you're think might think, OK, I'll just go create a policy for this. Well, actually, you might have to create one for a Windows device, one for a Mac, one for um, Apple iOS, which would be your iPhone and your tablets, your iPads. And then you might have to create one for Android. So you might end up having to create you know, three to four policies um, depending on what you're trying to do. So something to keep in mind as you are con considering that. Um, there are some specific onboarding steps, as we were just mentioning. Um, when you're bringing a device into whether it's MDM or MAM. And so you want to make sure that, um, especially with personal devices, that um, those steps are followed. So that way it doesn't put that user's personal data at risk. Um, and it, it's actually a pretty simple process of installing a company portal. Um, we'll see what that kind of look kind of looks like. I, I have it already set up on an iPad that we'll look at here um, for the mobile application management side. Um, also training employees, um, whether it's around the um, the um, acceptable use policy, um, what they can do with it, because sometimes they might be trying to do something on a device such as copy data out to a non-managed application and it's preventing them. So it's making sure the employees know what the policies are, why they're in place and how they will might impact them. Um, and then offboarding or you know removal, how how are you going to offboard them? I mean, you need to kind of have a plan for the offboarding side of that. Um, you know, whether that's you know going in and actually saying, you know, remove data, switch this device to unmanaged, or um, just deleting the user, which is going to delete their access. So there's some different different things you have to consider. How are you going to offboard users with that with that information? Um, and then one highly rec high recommendation I have is when you're doing a lot of this, manage it with groups. Don't try to manage a lot of this as a per user basis because it will become um, very complicated. Um, one of the things you can do is um, dynamic groups. So you can do a you know, department for users and put them in a department. So you might have a finance department, you might have a sales department, you put that as their department, and then you can assign policies based on that dynamic group. And when you hire somebody, you just put what department they're in and it automatically filters them into those groups. So um, some of those things will help simplify the management as you go through. And so at this time, we're going to hop into the 365 side of things and, and look at uh, some of the, the fun things here. So I starting us out here in the um, kind of the, the portal, if you will, of the admin centers, um, admin.microsoft.com. And on the left hand side, you do have all your users, your teams, your roles, um, all of that, all the way down to the security compliance, endpoint management, and Azure Active Directory. So um, I've already got a tab open for endpoint management, but if you were to click on that, it's just going to open um, you up to um, here. And so this here has your, again, your has your dashboard, shows you um, status of devices that are connected. And what we will dive into here is devices real quick. And, and by the way, Corey, we, as you're doing that, yep. I, I, forgive me, as you, um, one of the things I've noticed, and I'll try and call it out, that uh, as you're scrolling sometimes, the uh, something about the, the Teams today is doing some sort of a weird blackout on the screen. So um, I, I don't know if you see that on your side, but uh, when I see it, I want to try and call it out so that uh, if, if, if sure. it, that way we can make sure to see what you're actually showing if that does pop up. Sure. So I'll, I'll like raise sure. my hand or try and get you that visibility uh, as it goes along. Sure. So sorry for those that are watching the recording or online right now sure all right you're seeing a, a devices window at the moment okay perfect so under our devices window here 
we have um, our platforms, as I mentioned earlier. So Windows, iOS, slash iPad OS, Mac OS, and Android. So if you're doing uh, policies, you have to do specific policies per platform. Um, and um, we're going to dive into the iOS, iPad side of things today, but the process is very similar to um, this for Android. And so when you come in, you're going to have devices that are registered. So here's an iPad that is registered. Um, we will see that it is a personally owned device. Um, right now it has a compliance status of compliant. Um, this is really huge. We'll look at a conditional access policy options where we can say, don't allow non-compliant devices to access data. Um, then we have um, enrollment, which I'll click on here. And so this, when you first set this up, this is really critical um, to get set up. So you have to create an Apple MDM push certification. So when you click on this, there's a uh, process that it walks you through. And it's basically a checkbox, a download a file, go to this website, upload that file, log in with an Apple ID, um, and then um, that should be a Apple Business Manager account ID. And then um, you'll upload that file. It'll spit you out another file that you load into here, and then it allows you to connect that. Now, there are certain, these do have certifications. They do have expiration dates. Um, so you will see here, it's good for one year. So this was updated 725. It expires um, this year. It expires 725 of next year. So they're only good for one year. So this is something that you have to know every year. You're going to have to refresh this certificate. Um, otherwise, your device management um, will, can possibly break. Um, and then from there, you're also going to need to create um, enrollment methods. So um, I'll click on the enrollment method here, and you have different devices that you can enroll. So you can actually come in here, hit add, um, select an Apple enrollment profile, and import devices. Um, so this you could get a list of devices and throw them in automatically. Um, and you've got enrollment types um, down here, so you can create that specific profile. This one is already created, which I will click on and go to properties. And it's, I mean, it's super simple. And what is it? It's device enrollment plan, and it includes all users, right? So you can do um, different users or groups who is allowed to enroll devices. Um, so we'll just backtrack here. Um, and then I'm going to go all the way back to devices and scroll down just a little bit here. So we have all of our policy sections on the left here. So we have compliance, conditional access, configuration. Um, there's some scripting. Then there's some Windows specific with updates here. And then there's update policies for iOS and iPad. Um, and then some enrolled device limit restrictions, um, which we covered that and some of the kind of best practices around allowing users to um, be able to register devices or not and some pieces with that last time. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and click on compliance policies. And what we're going to notice in here is that we have a couple of different compliance policies. And so we have one that's for Windows devices, one that's for iOS, iPad devices. And if I needed to, if I was doing um, Android devices, I can click the create policy, hit a drop down, and I can say Android devices. Now you're going to notice here there's different types of Android um, options. So there's a device administrator, an Android, um, AOS, AOSP, and then enterprise. So this depends on how the devices are basically managed from the Apple Play Store on how you would do that. Um, so you would select the appropriate profile and then you would create your policy. Um, I will pull up this compliance policy here that we've created. And here we can see that we have one device that is compliant. It's uh, successfully applied the policy. When we look at properties, here is where we have a lot of options. And so um, not to get too deep into the weeds on all of these properties, but um, you can you know, start to do things like um, making sure that the personal device is not jailbroken, which is basically means they hacked the system. So they have like root control and can do things that you're not supposed to be able to do with a device. Um, does it have, you know, defender for endpoint um, risk score that's, you know, low, medium or high, um, some system security requirements, you know, is there, you know, require a password um, word to unlock the device? Is there a minimum password length? Yes or no? What is that going to look like? Um, do you want to allow 
simple passwords or do you want it to be complex where it's multiple characters, uh, numbers, letters, um, piece, pieces like that? And what is the maximum uh, inactivity until screen lock? I want to call this out specifically as two minutes here because when we get into the iPad that I have set up, we'll actually see where I cannot change this on that tablet um, with the MAM setup. Um, you know, how, how, how often before you have to change a password? And then down here is where we can get some of the compliance. So if, um, if the device is not compliant, mark it non-compliant immediately, and then remotely lock the device if it's not compliant after two days, which means that it's basically not usable until the device becomes compliant. Um, and so th that's just to give an idea of a compliance uh, policy there. I'm going to click all the way back to devices here, and then we'll look at some configuration profiles. And so here we have, you'll see multiple profiles, um, some for um, iOS, iPad, one for Android, and a couple for Windows devices. And so what we have in here, we can do, um, this is a device features policy. And as we look at this one, um, down at the bottom here, it's kind of, I got some, some pop-outs that I'm gonna do here, but if it's a fully managed device, we can do things like, what do you want the home screen to look like? What icons do you want where? Um, which is really cool. Uh, down at the bottom, what do you want in the in the dock at the bottom? What applications there? Um, do you want to put a lock screen message on it? Right. So if the device is lost on the lock screen, where is it? Where do they want to send it to? Um, and then you know, single sign-on capabilities. Is there you know some single sign-on capabilities? So we have. There's a there's a lot of device features. This is just a couple that I put into this particular profile. Um, that we have, um, you can do device restrictions, which as we look at this, um, you know, so we're not going to go into each one of these, but um, what do you want to be able to allow, you know, blocking of corporate documents and unmanaged apps? Yes, block that right right there. There's now we're starting to talk some of those security pieces we're talking about. Um, require iTunes store store passwords for all purchases. Yes or no. Um, do you want to allow um, the game center to be used? you know, on a device, um, yes or no. Um, lock screen experience, what does that look like? You know, um, block control center access in the lock screen. Um, and then passwords, again, we have another password policy that we can apply um, here as well. And then we can also do wireless, you know, allow data roaming. Um, one of the clients that we have, we have set up with a bunch of iPads with um, MDM and we actually have it restricted. So the only um, wireless network the device can join is the wireless network that's at their site specific to those devices to access corporate data. So we can imply that security all the way down to that level. And so that's some of the pieces that you can get um, within the policy here. Yeah. Um, by the way, it's it it's a lot of blackout right now too. Oh. So. Okay. Trying to let it. I don't know if it. I don't know if it happened there. Yeah, I can see it now. I don't know if it happens okay. when you're scrolling faster or switching faster. I think that it's like something that's not resolving, <laughs> or okay. uh, displaying as quickly as you're able to scroll. So, sure. Okay. Um, did we see? Did you see the device restrictions here? Uh, it, yeah, kind of. Is is it's yes, but it's also blacked out on the on the right side of the screen at the moment. So. Okay. Sure. Okay. There's. But I think we really did see. Right I think we did see. I think we did see what you had there previously. But okay. now it's just yeah. So it's it's just Perfect. acting definitely strange. Okay. Sure. So um so we have the restrictions here and obviously to create a new profile you would click create profile. Um, you would select your device type here, um, and you have a settings catalog and templates. Um, settings catalog. We'll go ahead and just kind of do a sample one here. Uh, I'll just call it policy just for our, our demo here. And now we have an add a setting. And then here you can start to see all sorts of settings that I can start to pick from um, that I might want to do, you know, user notifications, security passcode, um, some proxy information. Now this is just one piece of it. Um, there's more that you can do with this um, as well. So like if we click on um, passcode, that's a good one. We'll give this a second to load. And on the, um, you should see on the right hand side here in a minute, once this loads, it will give us very specific settings that we can select. And then we can actually check these and it will pop the ones that we want over onto the left side for us to configure as we see fit. Um, I'll go ahead and close the settings picker. 
um, standard you go through, add some tags if you need to, add assignments as you need to, and then you go to review and create. Um, just as a reminder, last time we talked about how do you create a scope stack or a scope tag and how can you use that to apply policy as well. Um, so that would be the policy there. I'm going to switch back to devices here. Um, and then actually on the left, I'm going to go all the way over to apps. So this is going to be the next kind of phase. So now that is giving us some of that um, kind of the device level control, right? So the, that's the device side, you know, um, think of it like the, the operating system controls there in a sense. Applications now is going to give us the ability to do application um, management. And so I have iOS, iPad, I'm going to go into here. And you're going to notice here we have several applications list, listed. Uh, um, there's some that have an assignment and some that don't. So Excel is assigned. I'm going to click on um, the Excel policy here and click on properties. And it really is just as simple as I have Excel. I want it to be on the device. You know, I assign it to all users and all devices. Um, you can specify that down. Um, there are a number of Microsoft applications. I just went back to the main page here, so I'm going to click add. <clears throat> and we have app types that we would select from. Yep, did it black out yeah, again? It's, yeah, it's blacked out again. Okay. So I'll just let it slow here. Yeah, that's it's weird. Sometimes you're you're as you're navigating, it's no problem. But like right now, like I almost feel like you should scroll up and down with your mouse. Just it feels like it. Yeah, it's not. There we go. Okay, now you're on iOS, iPad. Yep, I can see it now. Yep. Add. Okay, there we go. Now we're good. All right. Yep. Add. Um, and so we have apps. So we have iOS store apps, web links, built-in apps, and line of business applications. And so, um, what's really neat here is you can do an iOS store app. And then you can hit select and then it's going to take you to another page here where you can actually search apps that will be in the ios store um so let's do see if we can find power bi or there's power bi so we'll go ahead and add this um, application here and you'll notice it fills in a whole bunch of information for us automatically and we just have to go next here and then this is where we assign it <clears throat> And so give it a second here. Um, so we should have yeah. a require. <laughs> it's all right. It's there's a there's a couple there's some cells. It's not blacked out like the whole screen, but okay. I think for the most part we can see what you're doing. So OK, sure. So there's a required available for enrollment available with or without enrollment and then uninstall devices. So on this one, I'm going to call it a required all users, all devices. I'm going to do next and I'm going to do a create. And so. This is then going to do that policy um, creation for us. I'm going to click back on our iOS I, um, for apps. So we have all those there. We will see the Power BI has it's blacked been, out. Oh my goodness, this is I know. crazy. I think this is a team like Teams has been doing some weird stuff the last like 48 hours. So I think that's what we're seeing here. Yeah. Um, okay, let me click yeah, on a different screen and I'll click back here. Um, there you go. That that's yeah. Click back in there. Okay. That sounds good. Okay. OK, so yep, basically we have so the far. policy created and now I have app protection policies. Um, and so this is where you can get into some more of that granular pieces. I'm going to open this policy up here and look at the properties. And. This right here now allows me to say, you know. Um, this prevent backups, that's like saying, hey, if this is a personal device, do I want them to be able to back up my company data to their personal iCloud account? Yes or no, I want them to. I want that blocked, right? Um, Gives us a team a uh, list of managed uh, applications, if you will, links that are all through here. So web-based applications that can be managed. Um, and so it has a whole bunch of policies you can do there. Um, and stop there. I'll give it a second here, see if it resets itself. Um, yeah, there we are. Okay, so this piece right kind here, of. I think is, okay. Can you see the access requirements? I see that, I see access requirements, but it's blacked out right below that just for that little section. OK, there we go. That. Now I can see it. OK, perfect. All right. Um, so I think this is really a really cool feature here, which we'll, we'll demo on the iPad is um, pin for access required. So I like to call this out because I have kids and I will often hand them my phone to watch something. 
and we all know how fingers can click on other things. Um, this, we can put a pin on the company managed apps to prevent them from being able to access those applications by a pin, pin number. So um, that's a piece I want to call out here. And we have other things that you can do uh, with conditional access locks here, like, um, you know, if it's a jailbroken device, block access, things like that. So we have this policy here that's in play, which we'll look at on an iPad here in just a second. Um, and then I am going to come back to apps and app protection is there. Yeah, the iOS. Okay. Um, thought there was one more thing I was going to jump to, but let's jump over to the iPad itself. Um, give me just a second to get this opened up and the screen share going. All right. And. All right. All right, so we have a screen share here of a iPad. I'm going to turn it sideways, so hopefully you can see it a little better. Um, and so what, what I have here now is um, we don't have Power BI that is um, an installed app yet, right? So I call this out for a reason. This is where I was going to go. So we're going to jump back over to our 365 portal, and we are going to go up to our devices. And um, we're going to look at our iOS iPads. And I have this iPad right here. This is the iPad. If I click on this, it's going to bring me into the device. I'm going to do a sync. OK, so I'm going to tell this iPad to sync. It's, a, it's at the top of the window there. It's going to initiate a sync for us. And then I'm going to switch back to our, our tablet here in a minute. And we, we should get a message here in a minute that tells us that it's going to install a further application. Um, but while we're waiting for that, I'm going to click on a couple of things here. And you're seeing the iPad OK? Mm -hmm. Yep. OK, perfect. So here is our here's our message. Hey, comp, you know, company policy is going to install something. I click install. And now in a second here, we're going to see there's the Power BI icon showing up as loading on the right. So now I just deployed it application to the iPad from the portal without having to go through the iPad trying to find all the, the settings. Um, and earlier, I'm going to click on settings here on the iPad. We had talked about um, that one thing I remember saying, the two minute screen lockout, right? So if I click on our display and I look at our auto lock, our auto lock says two minutes. And if I try and click on it, I can't do anything. You'll notice it's grayed out, so I can't change that. So there are some policies that allow us to have this control. Um, furthermore, I'm going to click under general and just show here um, we have, I'm going to scroll down, and we have a VPN and device management. When I click on that, we have a management profile installed here um, that's, our that's from our company profile. And so we have this here. If I expand this, it's going to tell me what applications are managed from it. If I go back, it's going to also give me further restrictions that I have mm. based upon this company profile. Um, I'm going to go all the way back out to our home screen. Now we have Power BI, which is finished installing. I'm going to open the company portal here. And inside the company portal, we also see similar things. I can do view all apps, and it will show me all the applications that are managed I have a device button at the bottom, which gives me information about the device when it last checked in, manufacturer um, pieces there. Um, I have a support option here. Um, there are some options where you can actually like put in a phone number where they can call if they need support. They can click here. It'll give you your help desk's phone number. Um, notifications, if there's any notifications that are coming through for, for the company on that. And then I click the more tab here. So now here is some of the things that what can your company see and what can't they see? And so I think this is really helpful to call out to what can't they see? Browsing history, personal data, access to your passwords, delete, view editor, delete your photos or see location of personal. Use. That's what they can't see with this proper management setup, right? I think that's very important to call out. What can they see? Some information about your device, the model, serial number, operating system, device name. Um, <clears throat> You know, with certain things, they can do a loss to reset so stolen de um, device to factory settings, certain depending on how it's set up, if it's set up one way or another, right? MDM versus MAM. 
um, view information collected by corporate apps, you know, and then from there, you know, corp for corporate devices, see your phone number, corporate devices, see all app installed, for corporate devices, see location of lost devices. So some pieces there, um, you do have the ability to configure terms and conditions. Um, we don't have any configured, otherwise they would show up there for us. Same thing with privacy policy. So you can configure some of that within your portal to have all that available on the device for the end user. Now the- hey, Corey, uh, real quick, yep. as you go back, if you can go back to that really quick, I don't know, uh, maybe you close it out. Uh, but like, so when it says for corporate devices, uh, that means that if you're doing for corporate owned devices, Right, that's effectively that's, what that's saying. So that that's a policy you could choose. Like, I mean, you could do it, I guess, on either corporate owned or non corporate owned. But that's kind of what that's applying. Is it if, if this is a corporate the, device? These things. Yeah, it's the ones that would be fully MDM managed that are purchased through okay. the like Apple the Business Manager. Yep. yep, like they have to be purchased through those special methods to get okay. proper management through them. Yes. Gotcha. Thank you. So, yep. All right. So then that feature I was mentioning with the pin number. So I'm going to open Outlook. And Outlook pops up and says, hey, you want to access, you know, Outlook, you need to put in a PIN number. And so I put in um, uh, put in my PIN number and then I get access to it, right? And then you can set a timeout on that. So this is set to a timeout of, I think, 30 minutes. So if I were to close Outlook and come back 30 minutes later, it's going to prompt me for that PIN number again. Um, so basically like an inactive timeout. So that would be... Um, here and and uh, that gives us some of that. Um, if we open Word, you know we have Word capabilities here. We've we've already put our pin number in, um, but you're going to notice a new application. Hey, it's now protecting this, and then it's going to close the app. You're going to have to reopen the app, and um, yeah. So here we have a message where it's a uh, removed data from the app. <laughs> Probably when you know. you're setting it up, I'm guessing, huh? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. So I've because I was doing some different accounts with this. So it was, you know, logging in with a different account saying, hey, it's been removed, right? So um I would have to switch accounts here if I sign out of this account. Yeah, that's and... the fun, by the way, of everyone listening as Corey's doing <laughs> the fun of doing demos and setting it all up yep. as you test, you're testing with lots of different accounts and just going back and forth. Yep. And so these are the things that and devices in general don't like that so they <laughs> they definitely get confused and they want to remember whatever you logged in as uh so that's uh, one of the challenges that definitely yeah. uh, pops up when you're doing when you're doing exactly. testing and demos so um i'm not going to log in here but you would you know if you needed to you would log into the application in theory hopefully let me kill off word here with the tablet just closing the applications i launch word my broadcast yeah, stopped working. Yep, okay. yep. Hang on a second here. I accidentally closed the broadcast. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. All right. All right. There we go. That's why I love about demos. Start the broadcast back. All right. There we go. All right. Broadcast is back. All right. So I closed out of the application after logging out, and now I'm logging. Uh, I just reopen the application and then here. So it's, it's telling us it's going to do some management. All that gives us the opportunity to sign in here so that we could access our company data and then all of our policies will apply there. So um, I do that there. Now I'm going to open up um, just as an example. I've got Kindle app here. Kindle opens up. You're going to notice doesn't prompt me for anything. Doesn't say anything about being managed by the company policy. Um, none of that there. So it's perfectly you know, open, no issues there. So um, that's to kind of give some of that that difference between what is, you know, visibly looking at that, you know, company managed versus not company managed. So um, yeah, so that's the uh, kind of a, an iPad real life demo there for you with that. Um, and I will- I like the example, uh, Corey, of um, a, a very common, uh, I think that is one of the common problems that we see is that folks will, you know, they have their, if they've got kids, for example, uh, then they'll hand their personal device uh, to their kids, of course. Why not? Why wouldn't you uh, at some point? And then they, you know, click away and you have no idea. But like being able to have those slightly little extra protections to make sure that, you know, they're not accidentally or inadvertently, you know, getting into, not that I'd be worried about kids having access to corporate data other than maybe they would send an email that they, that on accident or something like that, you know, yep. uh, that you wouldn't want to have happen. So yeah, that makes sense. Yep. I like that little yep. extra feature. 
Yeah, so it's it's kind of a, a cool feature there. Um, now, one of the other things I mentioned was conditional access. We would look at that real quick, um, and then that will conclude our demo. Um, from the admin center, that's where we would go to Azure Active Directory, which I already have open at the top here. Um, on the left hand side, I'm going to Azure Active Directory and in the new blade down at the bottom, there's a security which I'm going to click on. And it's going to open us up to a new window where I'm going to click on conditional access again. <laughs> so um, you should see a conditional access policy screen with uh, three policies here. Mm -hmm. This bottom one shows compliant devices is the name of the policy with a report only. So if I click on this and open up the settings, um, um, like we talked about with our um, MFA and single sign-on, um, you can identify who the policy of conditional access of policy applies to, what applications it applies to, and then we have conditions that we can apply. I'm going to click on that and open up device platforms because I think device platforms is super important to look at because, you know, what are the person? What are the devices that are going to be accessing this from? Right? Is it an iOS, a Windows Phone, Mac OS, Linux, Android? You can specify what device types that this policy applies to. So you could say, you know, iOS devices and Windows phones and Android. Windows and phones covering, still exist. Uh, they do. Yeah, I, I kind know, of. I'm just kidding. I'm sure they kind it's of like, exactly. It's like, kind of. They're out there. Here <laughs> Enough there. for Microsoft to make it an option, I guess. Yep. Yep. So you can select your devices there. Um, you know, location you can change, but this one we're solely focused on a compliance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at a grant policy here now, and I'm going to say require any device that's accessing all the cloud applications to be marked as a compliant device. And so again, compliance can be set for a whole number of things, even to the point of does it have an antivirus installed? Is antivirus up to date? Is Windows, you know, Defender installed? Uh, you know, so there's a lot of things that you can do around that compliance. Um, and so it will give access if a device is marked compliant. If it is not, it will block access. And so I think that's a super nice rule to be able to configure when you know, you might have devices out there that people aren't updating, right? They're intentionally like not doing updates and you, you know, there's a site, the security risk that comes out and says, oh, this version of this is um, no longer uh, secure. There's a zero day vulnerability that, you know, all they have to do is send you a text message. You don't even have to open it and they can take control of your device. I'm referring to one that was for uh, uh, Apple phones here like a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. um, but that would allow this would allow you to go in and put a policy that says if the device is not this OS version or higher, mark it as in non-compliant, and then this conditional access policy would block access, adding a layer to protect your company data. And so um, this here is is a a nice way to do that. Um, and you can define. I data. think you just you just alluded to that, but in another area you can define what compliance means, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's we, what I thought. That's, I I thought that's what the, the way what you said. Uh, that was going to ask that question, but then you said it. But like, so you get to choose. You know, do you allow the current and the most recent, or the the previous, or like what like what what how yep. granular do you want to get for what compliant means? Yeah. Exactly. Yep. So I went back yep. over to the endpoint management center under devices and under uh, iOS iPads, and we have our compliance policies right here. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so I'm going to go create policy. Um, Basically, you know, automatic types there. Um, I will just call this. No, oh, if I can spell well, policy, and I can still not spell. I think you already, you already <laughs> created one called policy. Would allow you to make a next one. Oh, oh that was, I didn't save okay. the other one. I didn't oh, save the gotcha, other one. Okay. So. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Yep. Um, but yeah, so here, you know, here's the jailbroken um, device properties right mm, here. Mm, Very yep. specific minimum OS version or minimum OS build version, right? And so you can actually specify that out right here and then save that policy. Um, and then if the device is not compliant, it will register that. Now, the one the one thing I will throw out there is that if a device, um, devices don't check in like instantly, right? Devices check in, it's like every two hours. So you might wanna, if you're putting in a new policy that needs to get pushed out right away, go into the device like I did and hit sync. Uh, you can do a bulk, sync so you can say you know i want to bulk edit 
um, devices. So I'll go under, I'll just, I won't save this policy, but I'll go under devices, um, iPad, iOS, and I'll do bulk device actions. And then I can select a platform. So like iOS, iPad, my device action of sync. And then I can go next, select all my devices. And if I had 50 of them, I could select all 50 right here. Um, walk through this and it will sync that it, it'll start on a sync. Um, you'll probably also notice under here under device actions, um, there's delete the device that'd be remove it from the 365 portal or retire it, wipe the device, restart the device, rename the device. Um, so there's some different options you have and most of these options are available for all device types. So, um, so right there. And, and as I mentioned earlier, um, you know, specifically here we looked at iPad. Um, you know, as an iOS, iPad OS, Android has all the same things. So you'll notice compliance policies, configuration policies. It has an enrollment as well. I did link this with uh, uh, Google Managed Play just so we could see like, here's all the options that you have. Otherwise these are like grayed out, not visible. Um, and so you have your different, you know, profiles, personally owned device with work profile, corporate owned dedicated device, corporate owned device with work profile or corporate owned fully managed user device. Um, and so you have different options here, but um, just to show that you have to do different policies for each device, each one has its own enrollment process. So um, through the through the 365 portal. Um, yeah, and so that there um, concludes the demo that I have. And oh, oh, there we go. So. All right, Corey. So thanks for thanks for walking us through that, and 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 for everyone um, watching now or listening in the future. Uh, sorry that there seemed to be some grayed out sections. I know that a couple of those areas uh, were a little difficult to see because of that. Some of you couldn't see it all, so that's when I stopped Corey uh, from going through it. But um, I think uh, Corey, a couple of things that I would just like, and I don't think we need to go through with the demo again or anything like that. But like, can you give us a couple scenarios of you know where? Um, you know, because it is where we see one versus the like the mobile device management, um, you know, and what, like just some of the scenarios that you've encountered. Again, I don't want to mention company names, but different different scenarios you've managed where like the application management is really it's definitive that that's the answer. And I know part of it is like corporate versus personal owned device, right? That's one of the big criteria. But like, I don't know, can you give some scenarios where people might? Yeah. Um, think about how does this apply to my organization and why might I choose one versus the other, um, things like that. Because I think in general, this is something that has been around a while, but most people, um, most organizations that we found, most, not all, moved away from buying mobile devices or whether iPads or whatever, not all, but but most. And so I think the default is most organizations have like people connecting to their corporate resources with personal devices with no policy at all employed. And so there's risk there. Um, I don't know. Can you just at a, at a high level give us a couple scenarios if you can think? I'm sure you can think of a couple off the top of your head. Yep. Yeah, definitely. So um, where I think of so we have MDM, MAM. Where would you use basically um, the different solutions types? So when I think of MDM, I think of that as um, you know a device that's going to stay kind of at the company. Um, long-term retention and where I've commonly seen this used, um, you know, you've got like medical clinics, dental clinics, um, dermatology clinics, all these kind of, of medical clinics, right, where they might be checking users in, right? And so for that, I would definitely go MDM, you know, buy a bunch of iPads, set them up with MDM, have an, you know, have remote application capability right there to check them in when they walk in the door, right? Um, where I would see you might end up with, you know, that as one thing, those same clinics might also employ MAM for the for the users to access their email from their personal cell phone when they're not in the office, right? So you have, mm -hmm. you know, doctors who are going to be running around all over the place doing things, you know, they might have um, different schedules than, you know, the standard Monday through Friday night, to, nine to five, and they might, you know, get an email from the clinic where there's a patient who, you know, has a um, some need for something or some some questions that need to be answered right away. MAM is going to help protect, you know, potentially in this particular case, 
HIPAA data because we can do policies to protect HIPAA data <clears throat> and PII data on that user's personal device, and they can still access it with MAM protected on their personal device. And so it's <clears throat> a situation where it's it's not that one solution is always right for one company or the other, but they both might they might need both. Um, Another organization that we work with has elected to not have anybody have access to company data outside of the office. I wouldn't really see a need to employ MAM there, right? I wouldn't for MAM because they're not going to be accessing it on personal devices, but they may have a couple of company owned devices that they want, you know, maybe a CEO, or like executive level individuals to have to access company data. So that's going to be your MDM solution to fully manage those company owned devices, right? Um, so there's uh, kind of two scenarios there for the, um, on the mobile application side, you might have an organization that doesn't have an office, right? No office at all. And so that office, you know, that you would normally have to confine inside of like where certain things can happen, but everybody's not in an office, they're using their own devices at home, company doesn't own a, a lick of IT equipment, if you will, right? Um, they just have all the all the people buy the whatever device they want, and they want to, them to be able to connect in. That's going to be your mobile application management all day long, you know, because that's what you're going to want to do. Your um, your mobile device management isn't going to work, say, on like a Windows laptop. From, um, that's the home edition that's purchased at at the you know the local Best Buy. Um, they're going to go buy that that iPad from the local Best Buy. They're going to buy the, you know whatever it happens to be. It's not going to have that setup management level setup. So um, that's just a couple couple different situations there um, that kind of come to mind off the yeah. the top of my head. Um, so one might be right for you. Both might be right for you. The other one might be right for you. Um, combination of both. So is typically most organizations we see are employing MAM um, just because they've. Right. gone through that process of not buying devices for their employees like that anymore. So, um, you know, and, and pushing everybody, yeah, just use your personal cell phone to access company data. We'll give you 20 bucks a month or whatever it is that they decide for a reimbursement um, for mm -hmm. that. So, yeah. yeah. And Corey, I think this is also something that uh, once we have a deeper conversation around, you know, do you have, uh, part of the problem is these things don't, these these conversations don't always come up, especially around personal devices, um, unless a problem arises, right? Like someone left the organization and stole data or or something like that, right? Or a device got stolen, how do I get the data back off of there? Or, um, and so uh, these are the kind of things that, but the other thing that like really, when we, when we open it, when we do some training and other sessions that we do, when we talk about that you can wipe the personal device, that's where people's, you know, ears and, and eyes kind of perk up a little bit. Like, wait a second. Yep. Uh, maybe we should address that. So I think that's where mobile application management is going to become more and more um, uh, proliferated, if you will, across the business community um, as trying to create a policy like an acceptable use policy. Like this is if you want to use a personal device, this is how we define it to be used. Um, uh, so there's a policy that probably is part of your uh, handbook. And, and then then you enforce it via the technology that Corey just uh, walked us through. Um, and then the other thing I would say from a summary perspective on the MDM side or mobile device management or devices that your corporate, uh, your organization owns, uh, and I think is the biggest trick that I've also, or the biggest pain that I've also seen, and uh, and, and unfortunately, um, it, it's extra steps to do this, and I don't just mean even setting up the stuff that Corey mentioned, is that buying the device in the beginning, uh, if you just, we've had it, we've had it happen uh, more often than not, they just go down, buy, you know, five iPads or five uh, iOS devices. Like, all right, I want to put these into a mobile device management solution. But if you didn't buy them through the business unit of those respective plate uh, entities, whether it be Apple or, or, or Google, um, you it's it's nearly impossible to get the full functionality because they it has to go through the proper channels. So that's some of the gotchas that I would suggest if this is something you're thinking about. Um, we'd love to like, we'd happy to share, you know, little lessons learned there, but it's, and, and, and this, the problem is like, we've even seen supply chain issues, which, which like going down to Apple, the Apple store and buying them, you can't just do that. Um, even though you can, but like to, to enroll in this program, we found that you can't just walk down there and do that. Uh, and so the convenience factor definitely gets disrupted. Uh, but again, it's just one of those 
asterisk public service announcements that we try and make around MDM if you're using uh, iOS or Android devices. Um, to, if you really want to leverage this, you have to be intentional all the way up front before you even buy it, buy the devices uh, for you to be able to deploy it in, the, uh, in, in all the capacity that um, and all the capabilities that are available for it. So that's really my summary, Corey, because that's the big thing that I've taken away in working with you uh, in recent uh, years is like if anything is a gotcha on the MDM side, it's that. Yep. And the other thing I'd throw in there to to go along with that is um, we have some had some organizations who are like, well, we bought it through a AT&T business account. That is completely different than a Apple business manager account. Mm. And so um, things like that. So you got to really be careful when you're buying, you know, devices like, is it actually an Apple business or manage account or is it like a, you know, that vendor's business management account right. plan that doesn't actually have that Apple business manager account behind it. So those are, you know, just to throw that in with that, um, you know, the big gotcha. Yeah, that's, I can't stress that one enough. So, yeah. Well, good. Well, I appreciate it. There aren't any questions. Uh, I try to interject them as we went along there uh, and, and poking a little bit. So uh, definitely thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for bearing with us as we had some little like teams looks like it was struggling with some resolution or screen refreshing. Um, and uh, hopefully that uh, part one and part two of endpoint device management has given you a lot to think about. And uh, hopefully if you want to do that yourself, great. If you want to ask us and if there's any way we might be able to help, just raise your hand, let us know. We'd be happy to have a chat and see if we could be a good fit to help. So, but that said, Corey, any final sign-offs? Uh, and like I say, MDM and MAM can be a lot of fun. So, <laughs> you know, think about it ahead of time and start, start the planning. It's not a quick process to implement. So, yeah. Very good. Thanks, Corey. Well, thanks a lot, everyone. Take care and make it a great day.